for giving me suits. I mean, I don't just, I don't, I really don't know how people can function and work together on this set. You got to do whatever answer my fucking question though. He dropped the walkie and decided to walk over there with Tracy. Alright, well tell him I decided that he can stand outside my door and knock for a hundred times so he can pick up that walk and answer my last question. I mean, it's, it's just been an awful experience. And, you know, if you really want to know what really goes on behind the scenes here, you, you know, I don't think that, you know, you really want to be here. I mean, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here at all. I'm just finished. Look, I'm, I'm coming over there right now. I, I will do whatever you want me to do. I'll come over there. You want to kill my ass? Whatever. I'm okay with that. Everybody here on the set has been yelling. It's just been totally intense. Mm -hmm. Stepping on a neck respectfully. Let's talk about it. Pac fans are asking me. Is it possible Pac held one of these walkie talkies? Is it possible that the walkie talkie that Fatal and Pac had at the MTV Awards? The walkie talkie on Made Niggas? Is it the same walkie talkie? I don't know, bro. Napoleon was missing. You see, Mutar was missing during the shooting. So, is it possible Mutar could have hand over the walkie talkie to Snoop? I'm just asking questions. Where the fuck was Mutar? Respectfully, drop comments below. Suge said, walkie talkie, no next tell. I said, only police got that kind of walkie talkies. <laughs> but did the death row crew, especially Pac and the Allos, where they're, where they're part of their entourage, the, these walkie talkies? Warren did a thing where he was on a talking with all this shit they be doing out there and he said that Snoop had a radio. He was at Snoop House when the shit happened. I heard a horn, bing, 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 honking in front of my house. Mm -hmm. I looked out the house and Snoop was outside in a uh, a white motherfucking Rolls Royce. Then he had this, the, the, the next tail back there. Remember the motherfucker? Yeah, 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 yeah. He had the motherfucker could go that whatever it was, it was hitting him all the way from what was going on from Vegas. Mm -hmm. And then he started getting calls and shit. And they was telling him that Tupac got shot and da 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 only way you would have a radio if you was at the fight with us and you had a security detail. Now they're not having a security detail. What are you doing with the radio? Two, we always go to the fight together. We always go to the club together. Even when they did that half ass watered down movie on pot, and he said, You gonna be at the fight? And all that type of shit. <laughs> so. Then all of a sudden, Warren says on the stage where they listen to the radio and they hear the gunshots. And basically somebody told them we got them or they got shot or all this shit. So how would you know that and why would you have a play by play on the radio? I kicked everybody out. Get the fuck out of here, everybody. Get out of here, man. And he took off. That's when he went to Vegas mm -hmm. to go see him. And that's when he went out there and when he went to the hospital. But I had, if I wouldn't have talked to him and, and and got him to come over to my house, he probably would have been right there in the car with them. He said Snoop kicked him out, then he came to the hospital. Snoop never came to the hospital, period. Then, Dash was on some other shit. I really hate bringing up Dash because I take mental health serious and I know he got mental problems, but Dash was on a situation saying that <clears throat> Snoop told him they can't go to the fight, can't go to the club, can't go to Vegas. It's going to fuck shit up because something will happen, basically. Were you in Vegas? No, we heard about it because they was trying to get us to go to Vegas. And we was like, dog pound, we was really on our fuck death row shit, really. You know what I'm saying? We was, already saying, we was already saying fuck death row. Uh, 
um, dad was like, no, I'm not going to that shit. You want to roll with them? If you're going, it's going to be all the bloods there and blah, 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 and none of the homies are going to be there. And I was like, dang, I didn't really think of it like that. I don't really feel uncomfortable, but now that you're saying like, hey, like Snoop ain't going, like, why would you want to roll? Why? We don't roll like that. You roll, you roll with Death Row when the homies roll. And I was like, you right. So I ran back over there and I told Bach, like, Bach, I probably ain't going to be able to roll. Well, that's one thing. Being badass to an interview, and you know, Pac being Pac, Pac was a real, real, real good motherfucker about getting everybody involved. So he seen badass, badass told the story. He said, Dad, what you doing? He said, well, they ain't putting me on that. He said, come on, I'll put you on the song. So he put badass on, snuck on, uh, on one of the songs, he blew badass up. Now, I don't know Pac put him on the song. Pac said, man, I'm gonna let you, you, I'm, you can go to the fight with me. So Pac was like, um, I, you can go to the fight with me. After the fight, we're going to the club. He said that, Dad told him, well, you can't go, something's gonna happen, basically the Pac or me, whoever. If you go, it's gonna fuck shit up. He stated that he was living with his mother and living with Dad, so he had to listen to Dad and not go to the fight. So I ran back over there and I told Pac, like, Pac, I probably ain't gonna be able to roll. And he was like, that's what's up? He was like, well, you know, well, I'll catch you, you know, when I come back and blah, blah, blah. And we chopped it up and that was the last time I ever talked to him. Like after, after when he got ready to leave, like we said, we said our goodbyes, and that was the last time I ever seen him or talked to him in life. Yeah, if all these people knew what was going on in the situation, nobody never commented or tell anybody that. So you're part of it. You part of that snake. You know what happened to snake, 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 snake. So the other situation is that even after this shit. A motherfucker was with KPD, according to KPD and everybody else, and everybody know this, street know this, I was locked up. But Snoop, Daz, and the rest of them, they did a song with one of the niggas from that, from that side who was in the car. And that's Lowe the Pot. Shit. Motherfuckers don't need that type of loyalty. Who was it? And that's like the shit. Who did they do the song with? What do you mean who was it? Who did the compilation? The person who did the compilation was that nigga Dre, or whatever his name is. Well, you know, he ain't here, but that's that. But like I said before, if Keefe tells the truth, if all the other shit makes sense, what is the problem? And then when you even look at the other situation, why was Frankie make up a lie and says when we was going to MGM Orlando tried to take Pac's chain he said that to the police and then I heard he went to the grand jury and changed and said he lied he said a security person told him to lie why? because that's a lie so when you look at all these things and you look at all these people who do these other interviews and they shoot themselves in the foot they can't go back and erase it so when you look at all those all those facts and you turn around and say, why is all these different stories about one incident? But the thing about it is like this. In the 30 years, this incident, they use this incident against me to try to run me. So what I mean by that, they put the narrative out there that I had Pac killed. Even though I got a bullet in the inside my skull still today. Oh. They put the narrative out there with a lie saying Baby Lane shot him, which he wasn't a shooter. He had told us that he was not going there with his words, them sellout niggas. I was told by another one of our security guards that was a bodyguard that he had escorted Pac to the airplane as they were leaving New York and Tupac told him specifically told him that he was a dead man walking. The last thing he said to me prior to leaving was 
He's not going to be in Vegas. I don't have to worry about him showing up. And don't worry about it because he won't be there. Reg, I've been knowing you and your whole family. Your sisters, your relatives, your father. Your uncle had the same force as me. Your uncle was a police child. I had the convertible a turbo sliding those ports to rag. You know, uncle had the hard top. He was one turbo, but it was the same Porsche. And he was a cop. Your whole family was cops or probation officers. Nothing wrong with that. And I don't have nothing against none of you people. I'm not going to bring up who stole them or who lied on me. Don't care. See, it's not about trying to put you down. But at the same time, you never came to the hospital. And if you did, you didn't come talk to me. I damn sure didn't tell you, oh, side side crypt that shot us. Reggie Jr. got into some shit. Big Reg wanted me to hire him. He said, give him a job, doing anything. Right? So I said, well, he can't work for me directly at none of these guys. So I helped Reggie Jr. to set up right way security. I laid the thing to help him out. And all this stuff about Reg said, he told me that the homies, a couple of the homies wanted to do something to me, kidnap me, and whatever, right? Well, did he report that to his superiors? So let's not paint a picture that's not true. But it's still a respect level. I get it. You guys get paid to do those interviews. And all of the, okay. the, 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 the facts the with that. The politics of that, right? Yeah, but I, I know I used to talk to him. He was actually, he was locked up with, with uh, my homeboy, Big Fab. Right. Uh, they was they was sellies in, was that T.I.? NBC. It's over, man. Puffy's a good friend of mine. Yeah. But shit, man, and we from, you know, from the, off the coast. There ain't nothing we can do at that point, but let's get down. So, you know, we wasn't really thinking about none of that, but we love Puffy and Biggie. Yeah. So we was at like a, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? Because we love Puffy, we love Biggie. Should push the line. Yeah. Now, what are we supposed to do? The only thing to do is smash. Well, you're on a certain side at that point. You can't really play the middle ground anymore. What middle ground? Right. From death row from the door. Yeah. Dog pound against the crib. Yeah. That's what we're pushing. From the door. So... Our bad. When you look at how things ended up with the, with the you know, the shootings... Well, see, the thing you know, is, with, with even when we was in that zone, yeah. that's what made everybody separate. Because it was like we don't agree with certain things. Because okay. that could have cost us our lives, or we could have hurt somebody we really like okay. and love. You know what I'm saying? So we was like, man, we done with this shit. Because we love Puffy, we love Biggie. Period. That showed us real right there where we might definitely have to hurt these guys. Well, we don't want to hurt Puffy or Biggie. I'm like, fuck, man, that's preposterous. Yeah. And then at the same time, there's other things going on. We don't want to hurt these guys as well. And, and Dr. Dre leaves. That's oh, over. Game over. Dr. Dre's gone. And then Pac is here going ham. On everything. Everything. And we used to really love that type of shit. But <clears throat> we got older. We was getting older. We was becoming men. And it's like, yeah, man. Mm. It's just a little too late. The ham is a little too late. We're done. You know, after Dr. Dre left, I was the first one to leave. Not Snoop, not Daz, nobody. Me, I was the first one to leave from the dog pound. Right after Dre left. Right after Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre left, and then I left. Okay. So well, when you wanted to Forget leave. It. When you wanted Forget to leave, it. was there a Forget it? <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> I mean was it easy to leave, you know, contract wise and stuff like that, or was Never. it No, not easy. No, the one who taught me how to leave was Lisa Left Eye Lopez. Right, because she was with Death Row at one point. Right. Uh -huh. Before all of that, when I left that room, it was Lisa who taught me how to leave. And how was that? How I could leave business wise. Okay. Uh, how, how did how if did I left tell eye... you I gotta kill you? 
How, how did Left Eye join Death Row? I've always I've always wondered the, the Who story. Knows, man? Lisa was hood, man. Lisa was raw and uncut. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Who knows, man? Lisa picks her own shit. She does it. Fuck. What can you do? And she worked a lot with you guys? Oh, definitely. Man. Okay. Lisa was a worker. That's all she did was work, 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 work. Her and Natina. My son's mother, Natina, Reed, yeah. Black. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about your loss, by the way. Ah, she was a great lady. She was a yeah. great lady, man. And, uh, you know, when she gave me my son, you know, it's crazy. She was such a great lady. So, Tupac was there and Death Row was still going, going crazy. You decided to leave at that point. I decided to leave because, um, I mean, you know, just to be honest, you want the real or the fake? The real. All right. You know, I'm a, my girlfriend at the time was the number one girl in the world. Well, Foxy right, Brown? Well, right before I got with her, before I got with Inga. Okay. Before then, I, uh, I decided I'm gonna move back to Philly. And I got in some trouble, and I met some people who was good at business, Joe Maroon, who could get me out of my situation and all that. He was a lawyer. And I decided to make him an executive, introduce him to this game. Mm -hmm. Then I met Foxy Brown. Or New York. Yes. Let's go back before New York. Because to, to be fair, I'm, I'm only interrupting you to be fair, because that beef between Pac and uh, Snoop happened before New York, right? This is how it happened. We were scheduled to do the Roseanne Bar show. Snoop and Pac had a dual um, single, Two of America's Most Wanted. He had already shot the video and done all of that. The song was uh, off the charts. It was bumping. We were at the penthouse in uh, L.A. off of Wilshire. We were at the very top. Snoop had one wing. Pac had the other wing. Meaning one side of that top building was Tupac's penthouse. The other side, when you came off the elevator, if you made a left, you would go to Pox. If you made a right, you would go to uh, Snoop's. Those were the only two penthouses up there. Snoop and Pox were going to perform together at the Roseanne Bar Show. And Snoop was over at Pox's penthouse, and Pox and he were talking. He uh, said, so, you know what time you got to be there, and uh, you, you're going to be there, and this and that, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, so it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Snoop never showed up. So, we had already gone to the rehearsal. Snoop supposed to show up for the rehearsal. He wasn't there. So we go back after the rehearsal to the penthouse. But before we, before we um, went back, this is what was funny. Ice-T was at the rehearsal. And I think he uh, was going to be part of hosting the show or doing something with them. And when we went back to the penthouse, all the way going back, Pac was irate, pissed off. And he was talking about Snoop. So I didn't come for the rehearsal. He lied, blah, 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 blah. Call your homeboys, Frank. Call your homeboys. The homeboys were the Snoop's bodyguards. Kenneth mm -hmm. and Marcus. So I called Kenneth up and I said, Kenny, what's up, man? Like, well, Pac is like, flipping, dude. Uh, Snoop didn't show up for the rehearsal. Because, yeah, I know. Because we still over in the penthouse. Because uh, he said he wasn't going. And I said, what? But, dude, he didn't show up for the rehearsal, man. What Pac going to do? They supposed to perform. Pac did his parts and everything. Because I don't know, he said he ain't going. So I they pot. He said, Snoop said he ain't going. That's that motherfucker. I was like, wow. What's up? 
This was like new. This was new. So, when we go back that night, Pac and Ice T hosted the show. They performed. And if you remember, if you saw it, they did um, uh, a Karen Carpenter song. And they made a joke out of it. Mm -hmm. So Snoop and Pac didn't perform that. And from that time on, that time forward, Pop was like, done with shit. He like, this nigga turned on him. And if you look at any of the uh, following couple of weeks uh, went by, and when they went to the MTV Awards, if you look at any of the pictures, any of the footage of Pac and Snoop, Sitting there next to one another, one another being interviewed by MTV. Snoop just is holding the mic, looking straight ahead, with like no expression on his face at all. Pac mm -hmm. is just like whoop 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 whoop, just interviewing and like going off. Snoop never said a word. He sat there like like this nigga's little brother. I can't open my mouth. It's like gave all control over to a box. DIC. Dad said. But it's Tormo inside the family, but you wouldn't know it. Okay. Well, from the outside, it looked like. Everything is gravy like a mother. But then, but then Tupac gets killed. Shit go haywire. Were you in Vegas? No, we heard about it, because they was trying to get us to go to Vegas. And we was like, dog pound, we was really on our f death row shit, really. You know what I'm saying? We was At already that saying, time. we was already saying f death row. Corrupt scene. Because dog said, we not going to Vegas. You know, we gonna, we gonna post. So, you know, he called us to, to the house, and was basically like, look, this is what we doing. DPG, we ain't going to Vegas. We gonna post. Nate Dog went though. He was like, I'm going. And he went out there to go have a good time. He's like, I ain't gotta be around all that going on with them. I'm gonna go by myself and do my own thing. But when the champ calls the shot, and Nate was like, I'm going. And the dog was like, be careful. And he's like, all the rest of us was like, dog said, we not going to Vegas, cuz. So everybody, you know, dog stay home and did what he was doing. Daz went and did what he was doing. I flew to the bay to go with D shot and, and he fought with Snoopy and Pac and the issues they have. Hey, look, brothers and family members, they butt heads sometimes because they don't always agree. Boy well, said a whole lot. A whole lot of truth. Dad said everything. And you know, you got to remember one thing. This is exactly what Corrupt said about Nate. Now, if Snoop is telling these guys, don't go to the fight, don't go to Vegas, basically, this, he's saying just don't go. For him to say, I can go to the fight, I can go to Vegas, I still have to be around him, basically. I'm gonna be around Pac. Only reason why somebody would tell you that, if they knew, okay, it's something gonna happen at this person. Somebody gonna, somebody gonna try to shoot this man. So I'm giving you a heads up. Don't be around because you might get shot by accident. Why would you just say, don't, if you say, don't go? Nate don't have to say, well, I just don't, I'm going, but I ain't going to be around them. Then it comes to the point where, why is y'all so angry at Pac? What did Pac do to you, motherfuckers? But just be yourself. Once again, it makes no sense for somebody to have a walkie-talkie 
walkie talkie, no next to him. Listen to everything play by play. Well, you hear the shots, you hear this. And who really calls Snoop? ASAP to let him know what happened. We know none of the homies had his number, so it couldn't be none of the homies. Well, unless, you know, one of the homies playing both sides. <laughs> And we're quite sure the outcome out. 